Hey guys, this is Dan from Magic Pachinko Restorations, and this video is going to attempt to do two things. Um, explain how uh, a pachinko works, specifically a Model B, um, and, and also give you uh, folks that are trying to take a machine apart a little, little bit of information. Um, if this is one of your first videos that you've watched made by me, I would certainly ask you to click on the subscribe button um, as I do make quite a few videos regarding pachinkos. And if you haven't um, already done so, magicpachinkorestorations.com is, is up and running. And I would certainly invite you to that site and take a look around, see uh, shows uh, how I do restorations, uh, what I'm currently working on, a lot of information on pachinkos. So this is a, a, this is a real set of uh, guts off of a Model B. Um, unfortunately, I had to scrap a machine. The uh, wooden frame was just in such bad shape. It uh, was literally falling apart. And uh, some critters had decided to live inside of this. So it, it was pretty nasty when I got it. Uh, one of the biggest things that uh, I tell anybody that's going to try to get a pachinko machine back up and running is... Uh, the cleaner you can get your machine, the better off you're going to be. Uh, when I do restores, obviously, I take them right down to individual components and clean them. Um, if you're not going to tear them down that far, you want to try to get into every place you possibly can and, and get it clean. So again, this is the, the guts of a Model B. I'm going to point out some stuff uh, initially, and then we'll, we'll, we'll tear it apart. The way that a Pachinko machine works is this is the upper hopper here and this is right now it's it's loaded with pachinko balls and most machines can handle five to eight hundred pachinko balls pretty easily they on, on a model b they exit the left side of the hopper into this chute this is a, a double track chute that goes all the way down to what's called the turnaround this is the turnaround right here for obvious reasons it it, <laughs> that's magnetic. Uh, it turns the balls in the opposite direction and brings them across. And when they get to here, they drop into the uh, jackpot chamber, uh, seven on each side, so 14 can drop out. And then the rest of the guts is the, uh, uh, the mechanism that will actually allow the balls to go out of the machine. So when you set a machine up, you want to make sure that this is inter interfacing here. It's latched. And what that does... Uh, there's there's two uh, let me get into that in a minute because I'm going to take some of the covers off so you get a better chance to uh, take a look at it so that's what it looks like uh, cover wise uh, this one has all of the covers it's supposed to have so if you're doing a restore um, then you want to start to remove the covers one of the first things you can take off easily is the covers so this is the jackpot cover it's held in with two screws and typically when I take something off I'll put the hardware back where it was so that when once this is clean and I go to put this back on, I know those are the two screws that hold this particular part on. So this is the jackpot cover. This is called the dump chute. Um, if you do decide to dump all the balls out of here, they're going to run down this chute here and exit the machine here. So this is called the dump chute. Again, a couple of screws, uh, one, two, three, hold this in. This can come right off. This, uh, there's two covers over here. These are mainly just dust covers to uh, prevent anything from getting inside the mechanism. These are held in by two nails. There's a nail here and a nail here. And there's also a screw on this particular one. This one down here protects the, the jackpot arm. And again, there's two nails that hold it in. So you just pull the nails, this cover comes off. Pull the nails in the one screw. And then this cover. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably going to happen more than once. Okay, so let's get this. Reset. Okay, so now it's reset. All right, so that's that's those covers. There's also a cover here, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt to get out. Um, quite typically, it's just got a brass nail through here uh, that's nailed right into the board. This comes out, and then this is the seesaw cover. This is just held in with a couple of screws. So there's all your covers. It gives you a, a much better look at, at the, the internal guts of the machine. Um, 
I don't think I'm going to be able to get this to actually pay out the way it should unless it's really mounted on a board and, and has all the covers in place. So we're going to have to kind of fake it. Um, this cover here is held in with uh, two screws here and three, well, this is a cover screw. You take these two screws out. So there's two there, two here, and then on the back side of this um, are some other, there's two other screws. So you really need to get all of this off the board before this cover will come off, okay? So I, I've got it just sort of tacked in place here. And quite often you'll, you'll find that they put some glue along these, these edges right here. Um, so although the rest of this is all loose, um, again, there's a couple of screws back here that hold it from the back side, but this will be glued and you have to be real careful. Um, I just use a, a pry tool. So when this is in there, I just get in with a pry tool and just try to get in there and, and you just sort of wiggle and do it slowly. But you'll be able to, the, the bonding of the glue will break and you'll be able to get this out. And if this gets a little bit broken up, it's not really going to hurt anything. Uh, so again, you can see the screws that I've left behind. These are the screws that hold parts in uh, for when you rebuild it later. So there's a real good look at the internal uh, makings of a pachinko machine. Uh, again, this is a Nisogen Model B, but most pachinko machines in the vintage years, in the, the 70s, um, are basically all the same. Uh, they, they do get laid out a little bit differently, and there are some machines that are, are quite a bit different, uh, that don't have a center jackpot. They've got jackpots in other places. But again, pachinko balls here, double run into the turnaround, they come across and then fill up the jackpot chamber here and here. There is a cover here. Um, this is quite often missing on a lot of machines, so if it is missing on your machine, um, I can make these with a 3D printer. Uh, you can buy those or uh, you just get a piece. I, I used to, before I could print them, I used to take a piece of uh, vinyl siding and just cut it so it fit in there and then tie wrapped it in place. Anything that'll just keep that cover. Uh, these just keep the balls from jumping over each other as, as does this here. And then this is the, again, this is the ball dump. If I were to release this, then these legs right now um, create a bridge there you can't see them but internally there's two legs that go across and allow the balls to go across into the jackpot chamber if i release this then these two legs swing out of the way and it creates a hole and all of the balls then go down down this chute and exit the machine okay so hopefully that won't happen while we're talking here all right, so here's again how a, uh, internally a pachinko will work. It doesn't matter where the ball comes into the machine, um, whether it's a pay pocket, a tulip, center attraction, makes no difference. They all end up right here. And this is at the end of the seesaw. This is called the seesaw right here. For obvious reasons, it's a seesaw. Initially, you want the seesaw up at, at the right end, down at the left end. And if it happens to be down like that, there's always a little push rod here. You just push up and it puts it in the right position. So any winning ball comes into the machine. It hits this bottom uh, ramp here and goes right into the end of the seesaw. Now, I don't think this works. I tried it, but we'll get it to work. But I, I'm just going to cheat. The ball goes in and it gets stuck there because it's not mounted on a, a good board. But by using the magnet, I can get it to now go into the end of the jackpot like it would. Now the weight of that is going to tip this and when it tips it's going to go down down through here into this chute. And if you notice here's your jackpot arm right here. So that ball is going to end up right on the end of the jackpot arm and the weight of that ball is going to push the jackpot arm down. The jackpot arm Interfaces here, comes up, interfaces here, comes across, and interfaces with this. And this is what releases the balls out of the jackpot. So it's probably going to throw jack pachinko balls all over the place because the covers aren't on. But I'm going to let, let this go. Okay. 
So again, the, the ball went here, hit the jackpot arm, pushed the jackpot arm down, this interfaced and let the balls out. Now what, what would happen with the covers is the balls hit this and then that goes like that. The balls run out into here. They hit the, the, the exit ball and go out the front of the machine. Okay, Without the covers, they went all over the place. Once the weight is released from this, it just comes right back down and relatches. The, the mechanics of this are just phenomenal. So here's, here's a couple of things that happen. This is called a paper clip right here. And then with a the cover, this, is, this little arm is right here. So again, this is latched onto this, and this is all, all kind of interconnected. So a ball comes in, and this tips. Now when this tips, it knocks this arm off of this plastic post. So this, the plastic post is keeping this from going anywhere. Okay? But when this tips, now this is, this is free to tip. All right? So when the, when the jackpot releases the balls, this tips down, and it pushes down on, on this. When it pushes down, it brings the seesaw back up. It also lifts this piece of metal out of the way. It's called the paper clip because the ball comes down here. And when the paper clip is here, the ball is, is, is held. When, the, when this lifts up, the paper clip lifts out of the way and it lets the ball exit the machine. And then the entire process resets itself. So that's basically the way that a Model B works. Um, and I always tell my customers, if you get a payout or you're expecting a payout and it does not pay out, you need to stop playing the machine. You don't want to continue to play because what will happen is this. Winning ball goes in and it gets stuck. No payout. Another winning ball goes in, it gets stuck, no payout. Another winning ball goes in, it gets stuck. Now, in this case, it started to push and it was okay, but let's just assume that, that this doesn't uh, go, or let me see if I can create another situation here. Okay, there. Okay, so let's say this situation happened. The seesaw dropped, it brought the arm down, but for some reason, this, this didn't lift up and let that ball out. So there's a ball stuck there. The jackpot didn't fill back up again. So if another, and, and this whole mechanism didn't reset. So if another ball goes in, even if it were to, to make it, in this case, there, make it to the seesaw, it can't go anywhere because it's just stuck there. So... Again, it just compounds the problem. So what you want to do is stop playing, take a look, and you say, oh, I, there's a ball jammed here, and there's a couple of balls jammed here. So you normally you can just lift up on the, the paper clip. That'll let the ball drop, and it lets the, the jackpot arm go right back up where it belongs, and it reloads the jackpot. Then you've got a couple of balls here, but if you... Let me see if I can catch that. Uh, then you're going to, again, push up here. It'll let the next ball in. So it went through two cycles. But now, every, but, and, and it's, it's stuck here. A lot of this has to do with the fact that it's mounted on a, a flimsy board, not a pachinko. But you would lift up and everything resets. So now everything's back to normal. And the next time you put a win in, it'll it'll win. So it's it's not it's not complicated to get a pachinko machine unjammed if you understand where the balls have to go to make the machine work properly. So I hope this helps. Uh, certainly, if you have any questions, uh, use the contact uh, me feature on the website. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if anybody ever needs a, a video made of anything that they're trying to do, needs help, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to make videos. Um, I'm retired. This is what I do. It's what keeps me busy, and I enjoy it. So 
Hope it helps. Thanks a lot for watching.